shameless plugs now for commercials. This is the shameless HA plugin uh, slot. Uh, we're highavailability.com. Uh, all we do is high availability. And uh, for ZFS and OpenZFS, we supply um, high availability sort of middleware to make ZFS highly available. History-wise, we've been going since 1995. Um, we started off predominantly on Solaris and Spark platforms, um, very much really kind of at the whole stack. So we'd make applications highly available. Um, and underneath that, typically a database and, and storage. Um, we think we were the first commercially um, available HA solution on, on Unix. And um, we've been running really for about 19 years. The product has a lot of, uh, a lot of history and it's been optimized over that time. The original design was to keep it simple, so it's very Unix-like and, and fits very well with most platforms. Um, over the years, we've had a, a very global install base of many thousands of enterprise deployments, um, predominantly on Solaris. The core capabilities of the product is it's, um, it's a general HA product. It's not limited to two nodes. Um, so we can provide a framework, really, that supports up to 256 services um, across nodes of 2 to 64 clusters. We support pretty much every Unix platform. Historically, we've done HPUX and AIX as well. Um, but most of our install base is Solaris and now Open Solaris and all the vari variants therefrom. We also provide an application framework to support many other applications, which I'll, I'll come on to. Um, all sorts of other capabilities there, which uh, hopefully are self-evident. Particularly for ZFS, though, um, we are the HA cluster choice for quite a few of the vendors. Um, we are the HA plugin for Next Center and CoRaid uh, and a few others. And to date, we've deployed over 2,000 ZFS clusters. We do a lot of work with the block and file services, so sort of high availability support for Comstar and uh, Allure and all the other sort of protocols. And we've implemented quite a sophisticated disk ring fencing mechanism to protect data and make sure split brain scenarios don't occur. Um, we're integrating as well fault management so that we don't just fail over in the event of a system fail, but if temperatures are getting too high or disks are beginning to wear out, there's a lot of work going on there. And also we've done a lot to optimize uh, import and export times. That's always the, the kind of the biggest problem. Um, if you've got quite complex set of fast pools, uh, the import times can be longer than more simple pools. So we've done a bit of work there to optimize that. Um, and also system freezes. Um, sometimes systems don't just fail and, and go cold. They stop and then come back. And from an HA perspective, if you think uh, another system's failed and then it comes back, you can get into a, a split brain scenario. So we have a lot of mechanisms to protect against that. And we, we have seen systems in the field, particularly high memory systems that can just freeze intermittently depending on the platform. So we put a lot of protection into safeguard against that. Just to give a, a very typical overview of what a, a sort of typical two-node topology would be for RSF, um, here we've got two nodes in kind of active-active um, capability, where the primary node is running one application or storage pool, and the second one also. And the, the kind of interfaces here are the, the VIP per node that guides the users to the relevant machine. So in this typical configuration, we've got two storage systems that are mirrored. And we have a number of heartbeats between the two nodes that tell us about the, the health of the cluster. It's worth pointing out here that the, the heartbeats are not just a ping. It's, it's actually um, a complete exchange of information about the state of the entire cluster. So it's not just a low-level network ping. The three different heartbeats we show here, the serial heartbeats are literally a serial cable using a low-level RST32 interface, and disk heartbeats. So the idea of a removing all single points of failure, if we lose the, the network and we lose the network heartbeats, we're protected by serial or disk heartbeats. And whilst you don't have to have them all, we recommend at least you know, two different heartbeat mechanisms to safeguard against that. So in the event here of a system failure, let's say the, the primary node on the left fails, the system on the right says all the heartbeats have gone, I'm going to start the service that was running on the primary node, and now we've got two VIPs representing both services running on, on node B. So the way we've implemented it for ZFS is the services, which are sort of normally applications of the database and file store under, um, in, in these kind of topologies, they're essentially ZFS pools. Um, you can have multiple pools per service or just a single pool. 
Uh, the nodes are really appliances, although they can be doing more than that, and uh, the various network services that we also fail over. Other applications can be added, and I'll, I'll come on to that. Removing all the single points of failure, this is obviously a single point of failure, and this is one of our custom sites in the, in the UK that uh, burnt down. So taking high availability away from a single point of failure, which is typically a data center. Here's another example, which is a site to site topology. So on the left, we've got site one, which has got a, a storage array with, uh, say, two servers. And site two, we've got another array with a, a third server. On the pools we've got, oh sorry, on the storage arrays we've got four pools, which said fast pools, which was labelled A, B, C, D, and each system is running a, a combination of those pools. So here we've got a, a WAN connection between the sites, and let's assume we're doing ZFS mirroring across there. Now we, we don't really care how you do that, whether it's um, you know some sort of replication or whether it's using ZFS mirroring. Let's assume as well both sites have outside network connectivity, so that there's rather than just a private one between the sites, they both have internet or, or some sort of VP, VPN connection outside of that. So here in this example, we've got server one that is running pool A, and showing on the left here is the VIP live on, on server one. And let's say server two is running pools B and C as two separate services. And over here on site two, we've got a pool D that's being managed here. So the topology here with the, the heartbeats is that all three servers can see each other via the, the private network, if you like, and they heartbeat between them. In this setup, we've also got a disk heartbeat, so all three systems can also communicate via the disks as well. Now, typically, this means that the, the disk connections are also going over the same WAN connections, the network, so there is a single point of failure there. So what we've implemented fairly recently is the, the idea of a stretch cluster using cloud-based heartbeats. So in this example, we have these relay stations that are running anywhere outside the, the network. And we set up kind of um, relayed heartbeats via this connection as well. So under normal service, we've got pool A running on server 1, B and C running on pool on server 2, and D on server 3. And let's assume we have a, a failure here on system 2 has crashed. So server two's failed, and, and the, the B and C VIPs are no longer responding. So server one and server three detect this, but we're going to restart the service on server one, because we, we don't want a geographical failover when we have a, a system locally there. So we have this idea of site bias that says, although both server one and server three are capable of failing over, we want it to fail over to server one. So server one is now running the three pools. Assuming now that we have a failure in site one, and site server two is still down, let's assume that the network has failed at site one, so it has no external network access, but server one is still alive. So server two is already down, and server one, so site one experienced a complete failure. Server one loses contact with server three via all heartbeats, and it can't see the outside world. So node one says, well, I've lost contact with everybody else. And I can't see the outside world either, so I assume I've been segmented. I'm going to shut my services down cleanly. At the same time, site two and server three says, well, I've lost contact with, with server one as well, but I can see the outside network. So I'm going to start those services that have now failed. And in this topology, we're going to assume that we're going to have a service C, but we don't want that to fail over to, to site two, because that's just a locally delivered service. So it's just to give an idea of the flexibility we can have. So in addition to the pools, we can also we also have an application framework that says rather than just failing over the storage, we can fail over applications as well. So an example here on pool B, we've got a MySQL database. And on pool C here, we've got a web server. So the agent framework also monitors the health of the application. So with MySQL, for example, we have a heartbeat mechanism through the database itself. And if we can't write to the database, we can't read from it, we assume we failed. And we can fail over, we can either try and restart that service locally or trigger a failover to another side. So I won't read through all these, but just some of the key features really. The idea is it's not just a two-node cluster with active active or active passive. It's much more generic than that. And the flexibility, you know, is, is pretty vast. Um, some of the key features for ZFS, um, again, all the sort of common protocols. 
Um, there's various other bits and pieces in there which um, I can talk about if anybody wants to sort of ask any questions later. Um, so the, the opportunity here for end users, uh, if you're building your own HA appliance or your own CFS appliance and you're looking for high availability, then we'd be happy to work with you and uh, show you what we can do. If you're a vendor and you're looking to build your own white labeled um, ZFS appliance and you're looking for an HA option, um, we provide the white label kind of situation too, like we do with Next Center, CoAid, and others. And uh, we would say we'd be happy to you know, work with you on evaluations and, and show you the, the power. Um, if you have any questions, um, I can answer them now or any time throughout the day. Uh, any questions for Gren? Yeah, so I've just got one question, and that's how do you market uh, ZFS, and what's what kind of um, response do you get from people that are more familiar with the traditional SANS? Well, I suppose we, we don't specifically market ZFS. Um, we do really sell our products not just on ZFS. It's you know most file systems under Unix, but um, I'd say. Probably 99% of our inquiries now are around CFS, and that's where we concentrate our efforts. So we don't sell HA. We only sell <coughs> sorry, we don't sell ZFS. We only sell HA. Just th the space we're in. That's where most of our inquiries and work comes from. Okay. Well, most of our inquiries tend to be on. Illumos and Illumos related operating systems. We get the occasional inquiry on Linux and BSD, um, and we do still do quite a lot of Solaris um, deliverables as well, but I'd say the vast majority now, probably 80, 90% are Illumos related. Actually, I've got another question. Based on you said that, so people coming to you for high availability products, um, is there a particularly sort of the the market segment is there a, is there a sort of trend in the market segment of who's actually looking for higher availability? I think most of our inquiries tend to be from people building their own appliances. Maybe they've they've used some of the branded um, products out there and decided that they can build their own because it's mostly based on open technology. So I would say a lot of the direct inquiries we get are more are more of that ilk. Um, and the rest really are vendors looking for an HA piece for their own offering. So it's a bit of both, really. We've got a, f a few sort of POCs out there at the moment that fit both those categories. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Gwen.